Okay, th thanks for feed. Well, so I'm going to zip through this fairly quickly in that case. Um, so kind of 10 minutes just for a whistle stop to of IDD therapy um, and what that is. So um, what is IDD therapy? Um, well, it's basically a, a computer-controlled mechanical spinal decompression. Um, it's a non-surgical treatment um, with people with disc pathology, radiculopathy, degenerative changes, and, and facet pathology as well. Um, the aims of the treatment is to mechanically influence the disc, essentially uh, increasing the, the volume of the disc by reducing the interdiscal pressure um, to a negative value to uh, allow disc reabsorption. So in other words, mechanical reduction. Um, to improve hydration, nutrition, um, and oxygen um, simulation in the disc, I think that was touched on this morning. With, with healthy discs, and um, to relax the reflex muscle spasm that you usually get um, around the disc that cr increases compression on that disc. Essentially, we're looking at kind of just creating a more optimal environment for, for disc to heal. Um, uh, so patients are simply strapped into, into a unit, and, um, and a targeted and precise decompression force can be applied to the damaged disc via a computer-controlled system. Not, not quite like the Medtronic guys, but um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's pretty technical, nevertheless. Um, so where did, it, where did it come from? I mean, really, it's an American system. Um, it really came off the back of a, of, of a study in 1995 um, that showed that axial decompression could reduce interdiscal pressure significantly. Um, this was kind of taken up uh, by an American neurosurgeon who um, was concerned with, with kind of cases of surgery that probably weren't cases of surgery. And, and he was looking for alternatives uh, to that. And, and this study kind of got him thinking about the therapeutic possibility of using mechanical disc reduction rather than surgical. And um, in, in, in 1997, he published a trial using this new computer technology where, where um, he kind of compared it with traditional traction and found that this showed to be much more effective. And he went on to develop this technology with protocols which kind of IDD clinicians that still use today, although slight, slightly tweaked. Um, in the UK, it's a relatively kind of new kid on the block. Um, uh, started in Scotland, in Glasgow, actually, 2008. We started in 2010. We were the third clinic in the UK to have it. Um, but it's grown consistently over the last 10 years. And at present, there's only, there's only 50 clinics that are providing uh, this treatment in it. Now, when I always do this presentation, I always, I always get asked, yeah, but it's just traction, isn't it? Um, and the answer is, it's based on the principle of traction but it's very different um, because the computer technology allows accuracy and precise control of the distraction forces that you wouldn't really be able to dream of with, with the mechanic, with, with, the, with the traditional traction treatment. Um, because it's computer controlled, um, it can use a sinusoidal um, waveform pattern. So it means that we hold a high tension for only 60 seconds before reducing it. Um, which means that we can get uh, physiological changes within the disc at a lower tension, um, which is better tolerated by the body than, than traditional traction, which just uses linear pulling. And probably the unique thing about this therapy is, is it applies a slow oscillatory stretch, um, which stimulate the Golgi tendon organs. Now, th these create autogenic inhib inhibition of the spinal extensor muscles. So basically, we can initiate a reflex relaxation in the, mu in the muscle, um, which is important for relieving pain, but also decreases the compressive force acting on the disc. Traditional traction can't affect this inverse stretch reflex. Um, and unfortunately, it can stimulate muscle spindle activity, so it can actually increase muscle contraction and therefore increase discal pressure. Um, so a little bit like comparing a a kind of shopping trolley with a Porsche, really. The next one. Is there any evidence supporting IDD? Um, well, the answer is yes, there, there, there is. I mean, in 2021, um, there was some evidence statistically significant improvement in low back pain. 
um, could be achieved by this. 2017, again, um, statistically significant improvements in cervical lumbar pain. And way back in 2006, 92% of 129 lumbar surgicals successfully avoided surgery. Uh, again, like all evidence, um, more evidence is needed. And that's what a lot of research showed, that more research is going. But most of these are, are small scale studies, but they do show that um, it, it is an effective sort of treatment. There is a clinical literature compendium, which I've put a little QR code there. So if anyone um, wants to see me afterwards or scan that, um, if you're interested at all, please feel free to do so. Um, so what, is, what does it look like? Um, who do we see? So many cases of patients undergoing this treatment um, as an alternative to surgery. So either they're, not, they're unable to have surgery or they're not very keen on having surgery or, or even epidural injections. Manual therapy is highly effective for this. I, I think we've, we've seen in, in the sessions this morning that, that you know, I think two disc problems settled pretty well with, with manual therapy. So um, we will not tend to use this uh, under three months and if the patient hasn't had manual therapy first. Um, it's only if manual therapy has failed that we'd consider putting them on this treatment. Um, it requires an intensive program um, spread out over a four to six period. And as I think everyone else has said, rehabilitation is essential to prevent further recurrence. So let's have a look at a couple of case studies. Um, so we've got Tom, um, four month worsening sciatica. He uh, initially had chiropractic treatment, which helped but then stopped working. Um, but his symptoms are definitely getting worse uh, with, with increasing um, nerve pain. Um, it, pretty fit guy uh, up to then, um, and it, meds only really gave him four hours um, relief. This was his um, chart on when he came in. So we see quite a lot of action going on there in his right leg. Um, the signs and symptoms... Um, he had real problems sitting, at 8 out of 10 pain. His kill start back score was kind of moderate. Um, his disability score was uh, 60%. Um, his, his functions wasn't great. Everything really caused him pain there. Um, mobility neuro testing, um, extension rotation, reproduces leg pain. Um, he'd reduced S1 reflex on the right, um, and he had a positive. Uh, neurodynamic uh, stretch test there. Um, this was his MRI, so he had a significant central, uh, I'm not allowed to say that anymore, am I? Sorry. <laughs> um, L, L5S1 um, disc bulge there, and on transverse, we can see there where it was um, affecting the right S1 nerve root. So Tom had the six weeks of treatment this was his pain chart when he finished the treatment. Um, his signs, hadn't had any meds from week two. His vas had reduced. In fact, he only had pain when he was sat, and that was only two. Uh, I was rested, reduced from 62% to 24%. Um, and pretty much, apart from sitting for 30 minutes, all of his, the rest of his function had been restored. His mobility neuro testing, he had pain-free mobility in all ranges. This one reflex had returned. Um, and he had a normal um, uh, neurodynamic neuro, uh, test. So Tom was pretty happy with that. Um, another case study here. Um, this was Julia. Four weeks of really nasty right sciatica and quite rapid functional loss. Um, she'd been seen by a triage physio um, and she'd been sent to a neurosurgeon and told that only surgery could help her. She was absolutely terrified of surgery. She really didn't want to go there and was looking at exploring every, um, every opportunity. But the symptoms were getting significantly worse. She was getting progressive um, paresthesia and anesthesia in, in the kind of L5 dermatome and some weakness in the, in the toes. Um, she hadn't had any leg pain before, but um, as like a lot of these discs, patients that they have a kind of previous history of, of grumbling low back pain which then was suddenly changed to become leg pain and, and cause problems. Um, she's on tramadol and diclofenic. Her signs, um, uh, pain was reasonably high, not that great, but she was on opiates. 
Um, her function was pretty poor. She couldn't really do anything. Her, her, her disability was at 64%. Um, her signs, um, all movements really caused her problems. Um, she had a 10 to 20% reduction um, in sensation over the right L5 dermatone, and big toe dorsiflexion had been reduced. Uh, she also had a positive nerve root test on the right. Um, this was her MRI um, when she came in. Again, uh, quite significant L4-5 there. And again, from the transverse, we can see that kind of right uh, L5 um, nerve root impingement. So, uh, as I said, we, we said, look, let's try, let's try this on as, as a hope of preventing you to having surgery. And um, after six weeks, this was her sign. So she had occasionally tingling calf pain. She was on, she was off all meds. Her pain had dropped significantly. Um, all of her function had pretty much returned to normal. In fact, she'd gone back to swimming. Her mobility, um, pretty much full pain free. Um, the sensor, sensory loss had pretty much gone, still a little bit left on that L5. Uh, but the big toe uh, power had returned and um, the straight leg raise test was still a little bit low with, with some low extremity pain. But she, um, she continued with, uh, with a, a rehab program and over the next three months she continued to improve massively. And six months post IDD, she was pretty much back to normal. Um, she had follow up MRI scans, which um, that was the same level. So we can see that the com complete reabsorption of the disc there. And that was the transverse. Um, fine as well. Um, she had ID back in 2012 and still in contact with Julia. In fact, she's just got back from a cycle tour of southern France um, and has no problems at all now. So, her disbulge hasn't recurred. Um, so she's not the only one that does well with this. These are a summary of our clinical outcomes. And we can see we have 90% you know, of, of lumbar disc prolapse with ridiculous symptoms treatment had an average improvement of 74%. And from our satisfaction data, most of our patients are pretty happy with this. So um, hopefully that's whizzed through that. <laughs> fairly quickly. Sorry, it's a bit of a whistle-stop tour, but I'm, I'm very conscious of the time. But if anybody wants to know anything more or interested more or, or would like to refer anyone, please have a chat with me afterwards. So thank you very much.